رح يكون معنا هلا مستر فابيو سينيبالدي من ايطاليا رح يحكي عن الامراض النفس الجسديه مستر فابيو هو معالج نفسي ومؤسس ريل واي اوف لايف بايطاليا السيشن اللي رح بتكون بالانجلش مستر فابيو جود مورنينج هلو Nice to meet you, to be here today together. Thank you a lot for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Long time. Uh, the yes. last uh, session was like one year ago. It's still in the same uh, difficult situation, maybe a little bit more, more and more every day. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, looking forward. To We are so excited for uh, your lecture today. I'm happy. I will do my best to fulfill your uh, <coughs> expectation. I hope. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, you want to share screen, so we open. Uh, we give okay. you an access to go to share your screen, and uh, we are ready when you are. Okay. Okay. Are you seeing my yes? Yes. Yes. Clearly. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So uh, I like to talk about today a very important uh, topic to me that is uh, psychosomatic disorders. Psychosomatic disorders is something always relevant because uh, in a nutshell, psychosomatic is how we adapt to the world. Of course, uh, in these uh, recent, uh, recent days, uh, we have a uh, to deal with some, uh, something that is not usual. So lockdown, uh, fear to be um, in the contagions. And so we have to do a lot about uh, adapting ourselves to not physiological situations. So I think it's important to take a look uh, at what is uh, changing. I will, um, for those who don't, don't know me, I am both a clinician and a researcher. So I will share my personal experience on, on the field with my patients, but also the results uh, of the researches we are uh, conducting, uh, we have conducted with the Association for Integrative uh, Sciences. And many of these uh, experiences and these researches are uh, about uh, emerging issues. In the last year and more, uh, because it's more than a year we are facing the COVID, we are witnessing the, the, a huge increase of diseases and dysfunctions with some peculiar um, configurations. It is, of course, uh, related to the COVID pandemic uh, and all the following uh, restrictions and the consequences in our life. But on the other hand, we can see these problems as a magnification of previous dormant issues that were somehow compensated or kept in precarious balance before. For example, if someone has a problem with a, uh, here has a husband or wife, uh, maybe that being a, all the day focus on work, uh, maybe working in another city, this conflict uh, doesn't emerge. But staying in the same house all day long uh, for the lockdown, for other issues, the problem uh, arises. And this, uh, this uh, dynamic is uh, very relevant in many cases. Just to name a few of these um, peculiar uh, psychosomatic issues that we are uh, witnessing, I've encountered a lot uh, of uh, students sick in the morning. From primary school uh, through to the university, uh, no matter the gender, the age, uh, if they are um, their general health, uh, there are a lot of students that get up in the morning and then feel uh, nausea, Uh, vomiting just before uh, connecting to their online uh, classes. And there was nothing uh, similar 
in the in the years before the, the lockdown. Another category of problems is about teenagers uh, uh, stuck at home in uh, isolation, but not only when there is the lockdown, but also after when the restriction is there is no more or is there are some more degrees of freedom. There is a sort of personal choice that, of course, is not a, a cognitive. Uh, it's not a cognitive choice. It's something more unconscious, and with a lot of uh, psycho psychobiological dysfunction, maybe also hormonal. So we uh, we can see uh, girls with uh, hormonal disease, uh, maybe the. They have uh, problems uh, in their development with the estrogens. Uh, it, uh, it can be too much or too low. And it, this is clear psychosomatic because they are changing their behavior. They have a depressed mood or something like a generalized anxiety. And the hormonal production is um, involved. It's not something magical. We will see in the next uh, slides uh, that there is a, a direct connection between these phenomena, staying closed at home and changing our uh, hormonal production. And it is a, a circle. So changing our hormonal levels uh, will change our mood. So it's important to have uh, this clear, take it into consideration. I think that has, as a psychologist, a psychotherapist, a social worker, have the duty to deal with some more psychobiological issues, because of course we are not, we don't have to be physical doctors or immunologists, but the two elements are so connected that. There is a lot we can do, only suggesting different habits, uh, point of view. So we can uh, work on the hormones, uh, for example, or uh, on uh, neurotransmitters, uh, just uh, by choices, uh, uh, with a decision, uh, with a point of view. Another category is about uh, adults. Uh, I'm uh, encountering a lot of adults that they used to be highly productive and efficient that are no longer able to, to work to the deadlines or to look after themselves. They are not taking care of their appearance, not for, of course, egocentrism or for narcissism, but just the, the normal, the healthy way to take care of ourselves. There is also an extreme uh, increase uh, in uh, some other uh, psych typical psychosomatic issues, uh, such as uh, headaches, uh, neck pain, uh, general sensitization. Uh, there are a lot of persons that are uh, experiencing exaggerated reactions uh, to any stimulus. Uh, the music is too high in a restaurant, in the car, and they react with the panic, uh, with the agitation, and, and it's not uh, normal. Even uh, with a very small, tiny uh, stimulus, uh, such as uh, the tags uh, of the clothing, there is the tag here, and they continuously feel it. They can't uh, focus their attention somewhere else, but uh, in uh, all their uh, previous uh, life, uh, this was not a problem. And the tag uh, was uh, uh, right behind them uh, usually. But now the sensitization is higher and uh, they have to face it. And uh, something similar, even if the problem appears really different, is about allergies and food intolerances because uh, we have to uh, ask ourselves uh, why I was uh, not uh, allergic or intolerant to something and now I am. And it's 
this is good for us and also clearly for our patients and clients. And so we have to see how these uh, uh, metabolic dynamics uh, are influenced by uh, our habits, uh, our way of manage or not manage our emotions. Of course, also behavioral and emotional dysregulation are uh, highly increased and, and so on. Today we have just an hour, so I want to focus uh, on something uh, um, specific, but uh, it's important to take into consideration that many of the processes and uh, mechanisms we are looking at are useful in all these cases. So uh, let's start. Uh, I want to start from a specific case. The important things uh, to know is that this case and the others we have uh, quickly mentioned are psychosomatic disorders. And each uh, psychosomatic disorder is a multifactorial disorder. It's not possible to find just one cause. It is the trauma, it is the uh, what he hit uh, every day, it is the lack of uh, physical activities. Probably all of them, someone in a higher percentage, but uh, we have to work on uh, all of them together. And when I um, face this, uh, I'm talking about uh, what I called, uh, and uh, I've found this, this name because I think it's important. I called the integrative uh, sciences. Uh, that is uh, the idea that we can put together a lot of different uh, sciences. Uh, um, to give you just uh, some example, we can put different psychotherapy and psychological uh, um, aspects, uh, but we can uh, use also uh, neuroplasticity, uh, brain metabolisms. Uh, um, we can use the, uh, the training patterns developed for, for um, physical endurance uh, to develop uh, a better response in our nervous systems. So I will give you, I will try to give you some hints from a very many different perspective, perspective that I hope you can try to integrate in your daily practice. The starting case uh, I've selected for you today is a girl, she's a, uh, nine years old. She wake up every morning, has breakfast. She's, uh, she's uh, hungry, so everything is fine about uh, her uh, appetite. She set up everything, take a shower, dress up. And five minutes before the lesson start, she vomits. She vomits sometimes solid, sometimes just uh, liquids. It doesn't seem related to what she have just uh, eat this morning or the night before. And she has no specific problem while attending this, the classes. So talking to her, she, she's fine, she likes school, she has a good uh, relation with uh, each one of uh, her classmates. Uh, she likes also studying. She doesn't uh, report any fear uh, for uh, exams, uh, interrogations, uh, and her medical, general medical conditions is good. So we have to think about what is the real problem? Why vomiting? It's a very strong reaction of vomit. It's a very unpleasant. And she's very young. Uh, with a girl uh, with some years more, uh, let's say an adolescent, uh, we can think it quickly when uh, we see vomiting, we think uh, about uh, anorexia, bulimia, uh, the shape of her body, but no, this is not the case. She, uh, she, she finds this symptom very dystonic to her. And to give you a different uh, example of this kind of case, uh, I just uh, talked yesterday with a boy, 21 years old, 
is a semi-professional athlete, student at the university, and the symptoms, uh, the sequences are exactly the same. So it is a something uh, very uh, specific uh, in their way of being uh, in this, in this kind of situations. So we have to look at all uh, the, the factors uh, at play. I'd like to give you a quick preview of a map I use uh, often. This is called uh, the interconnected levels, uh, where you can see from the bottom to top, uh, we have uh, genetic, and so inside, uh, deep inside our cell, uh, the epigenetic, where we can do a lot, uh, changing our patterns, uh, the cell, metabolisms, uh, and uh, neurotransmitters, uh, the organs, uh, the, and going up to emotion, cognition, social uh, patterns and schemes, uh, ancestral needs. So everything is connected. And so to um, identify a problem, I generally try to have information about all these uh, areas and domains. To uh, go straight to the point, uh, in this case, uh, I start from disgust. What is disgust? Uh, disgust uh, is uh, more complex than it could uh, appear because uh, it can be considered, uh, and generally it is uh, considered as an emotional response. Of course, it's part of the five uh, basic uh, emotions, but originally, in the man and in all the evolved mammals, disgust is a reaction to throw out the toxic food. It's, so it's part first of our adaptation system. Of course, in the modern era, these days is also part, uh, not, uh, it, it deals, uh, also with the disrupting food, uh, for example, uh, processed food that are, are not uh, highly toxic, but in the long run, uh, they are not uh, natural. And so um, to give you an example, if you eat something uh, uh, based on soy, uh, soy is very growing uh, because it's cheap, uh, it's considered uh, a good alternative uh, to milk, uh, it's a source of protein, uh, but soy, if uh, it is a, um, a modified, uh, a genetically modified organism, uh, it's not the matter, the modified organism, also beer, it's a modified organism, uh, but the way the soy is modified, it has, its molecules are very close, very similar to the estrogen. So they can tackle the receptor for estrogen and start a signal that is not related to real hormones. So we have to consider that there is this metabolic process and this start, this triggers also the reaction of disgust in our body. So it's very complex because also disgust in the men's and women can, in men and women can, can extend, can evolve to the ideative level. In fact, we just, we, not other mammals can vomit, throw up, also seeing something that is against our values or feeling a person of, if we are forced to do something that we don't want to do. So disgust is very important and has to be read on all these possible uh, keys. I'm doing a quick uh, overview of, on four different uh, uh, elements, and then I go back uh, in each one of them and give you some more detailed explanation and some practical example, examples of what I do to regulate this area. Um, hypers, uh, I called this uh, area hypers because it is about hyper arousal, hyper activation. Is our nervous and not only system that is hyper activated. This is clearly related to the disgust because 
facing something that is not good for us uh, is uh, hyper exciting our uh, systems uh, and it's not good uh, and then when we reach uh, a threshold uh, it's very hard to get back and feel relaxed Hi, uh, this area is very well known by uh, all uh, the, in, in, in many different fields of uh, psychology and psychotherapy because uh, is a uh, under uh, chronic stress uh, trauma ptsd so we will see how it is related to disgust and the other two um, areas in uh, peculiar ways uh, i don't take time to uh, talk about the general uh, way of functioning of this uh, i assume that you well know that all of that something that uh, probably is less known uh, is tmj i'm talking about the temporal mandibular joints uh, temporal mandibular joints uh, this is uh, a muscular connection so to move uh, to clench your teeth uh, you have to activate also these muscles in fact if you clench uh, you and you put your hand here you feel uh, a little a little expansion here and this is important because it's uh, involved uh, in all our emotional responses mainly about disgust because it's about uh, um, mastication but it's also about aggressiveness consider this, this these muscles these muscles are very short this, they are called masseters they are so powerful these muscles in a in an average man can uh, do a pressure equivalent to uh, 100 uh, kilo kilograms so they are very powerful for example with my legs uh, if i'm not trained uh, i could reach uh, 80 90 kilograms less than this because in the evolution we as uh, all the other mammals uh, used uh, the mouth to destroy um, harder things to do to eat uh, to menace uh, the invaders uh, so it's very important and it's about our safety system to defend and to uh, eat something and it's always activated and because these muscles are so unconscious and so powerful if we can release tensions in this area we have a great advantage in emotion regulation in letting go stress um, and it is it is very interesting in the case of vomiting but also for aggressive uh, men so it's it's a really important to work on this area and at the end we have the vestibular uh, systems vestibular system uh, in a strict way it's about the ear and the uh, ability to take balance uh, but the, today, nowadays, we consider the vestibular system all the system of putting together stimulus from the ear, from the visual, and putting together in the cerebellum, to put all them together in the cerebellum to keep balance. And if you think about that, balance is very important in vomiting because nausea is the first, and vomiting is one of the typical symptoms of a sea sickness you take a boat and if you are sensible to this you have nausea and also maybe vomit so it is important because it's also so there is a, a, a biological a bodily component but also this area is a uh, so much uh, psychological because uh, as we say you know the metaphors uh, the balance is not the body balance it's the balance of our mind uh, is to uh, if you think uh, about uh, many psychophysical exercises it's about eradication keeping balance uh, from uh, yoga to bioenergetic you work on putting your legs uh, quite uh, wide uh, to bend your knees uh, and gain more balance and uh, this is also connected to 
our sight. Uh, so moving our, our eyes, not gazing strict, strictly, but moving them, uh, it's very good uh, for our sense of safety. Consider that we have uh, um, a sort of cone, uh, 50, 60 degrees, uh, where we can focus everything very well. Outside this cone, uh, everything that is not infocused and not well recognized is uh, hyper uh, exciting the amygdala because it is a potential uh, threat. So it's important to consider all these four uh, as a very, very important in the case we are uh, um, considering right, uh, right now. So they are all connected. And to give you some tips on each one of these, let's start from the disgust. Disgust, it's about not only toxic food, but as we said, this is a work from Ledoux, you say there is, you can see vomeronasal system, auditory visual system. So we have both in this schema. We have the disgust with the smell, but we have also the perception and the visual hints that are important in the vestibular system. And we have unconditioned threat and conditioned threat. So. And this is a work uh, where Ledoux, Joseph Ledoux, the great uh, neuroscientist, uh, shows us uh, that uh, if we want uh, to reduce uh, uh, a reaction, uh, an exaggerated reaction, a phobic reaction, so we can part in part consider that girl <clears throat> as a phobic reaction to the lesson, we have to work also on a what she perceived with her sight and with their uh, nose and reduce any interference. What is interesting is that uh, uh, here we talk about conditioned and conditioned threat. So if you smell uh, something that is not more uh, good, that is rotten, uh, it's bad. You immediately recognize that. It is a natural, a natural reaction. It's uh, something you have pre-installed in your software when you're born. But uh, here, maybe you can uh, uh, pair a stimulus, uh, as something you smell in, the, in front, when you are in front of your PC. So let's consider that the PC is of plastic. It can be, if it is new, and uh, after working for a while, it, it starts warming, uh, eating, and the plastic uh, start uh, uh, producing a bad smell. Very subtle, but you can recognize it. If it, it is old, old it is uh, probably with a lot of dust inside. And uh, when start the fan start spinning, this dust, uh, goes out uh, and the girl uh, can change it. So something very, very simple I've done with this girl at the beginning was to ask their mom to perfectly clean the room uh, to make some natural, it is, it is very important, some natural uh, uh, perfumes, uh, so dried fruit, uh, um, or essence oils, uh, so that we can have a good stimulus and uh, not bad ones. And this was immediately effective, not the resolution of the problem, but a huge increase in well being for the girl. She felt nausea after half an hour the lesson was started. At the beginning, when she came to me, she told me that she sat down five minutes before and uh, the vomiting reaction started uh, immediately. So it's uh, interesting to work also on this factor. Another uh, little practical hint, uh, if you work with uh, natural uh, smells, uh, with the uh, extract, uh, I think it's not my, uh, my area of... Uh, experiences a lot, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if everything in this area works. Uh, but I can surely say you that uh, 
the natural extract of lavender is really effective in relaxing the muscles. There are scientific studies about that. So if there is someone overstressed, hyperactivated, and this girl was, we introduced the natural uh, perfumes and natural extract of uh, lavender. If you want to delve deep in, the, in that, uh, I can send you after the conference uh, some links, uh, for example, to an article where I explain all these mechanisms that there are about every emotional reaction after uh, something starting from an incoming stimulus, if you look here. So it is important, we have mentioned the stimulus, so visual stimulus and olfactory stimulus. It is important. Um, another part, uh, just to jump, uh, to, to keep a, a, a continuity in, in the, um, with, with this perceptual uh, theme, uh, we jump uh, away for a while, just for a while from the disgust, uh, and we can go to the vestibular system. We just uh, said that the vestibular system is about balance, <clears throat> physical and mental balance, and it is regulated by some perceptive organs. The same organs we use to regulate our, our adaptation responses and our emotional responses. In particular, the vestibular system is about ears, eyes, and look at here, visual fixation versus uh, quick movement or continuous movements is the key to work uh, on this area. This is interesting. Maybe someone of you is trained uh, in uh, EMDR or other techniques uh, about uh, uh, eyes movement. Uh, I think it's uh, less known, but it's very powerful. The functional neurology tradition that is uh, older than um, EMDR, uh, they work uh, on uh, the ability to take control of a uh, smooth eyes movement uh, without gazing and uh, or too much quick movement to regulate our emotional uh, processes. Of course, we have also the, all the body system about the balance. So we have a proprioception, interoception, and all is mixed up in the brain that find the final, uh, the final results about that. So going back to the very practical uh, suggestion that you can uh, use, I suggested to this girl, but I do that uh, with a lot of managers uh, that are in chronic stress uh, or with uh, anxiety, <clears throat> that we don't have to look straight uh, for more than uh, 20, 25 minutes. This doesn't mean that she has to left the lessons, but she, have, she has just to do this follow the lessons, put a timer on her cell phone or on the computer, and each 15, 20 minutes, when the bell rings, she took her out, put them up, make a clockwise or counterclockwise movement, and then keep watching. If she, she can be worried about uh, what can say the other uh, classmates uh, or the or for uh, an adult uh, uh, what can uh, th thinking the other person in the meetings the trick is just to it's very quick this movement it's a few seconds you can uh, switch off the the camera for a while they will think it's uh, just a problem of connection then uh, turn uh, turn it on uh, after doing this, but this is just an example. They can move. The important things is to move the eyes uh, frequently. Uh, another trick that is uh, 
both a physical restoration and a way to move our eyes is sometimes just once, twice a day, use eye drops, not the, the medicated eye drops, just the natural to lubricate the eyes. It is important because they oblige us to have a sort of reset of our sensation in the eyes, to move them, to have a few tears. And so it's a good way to do something like that. And so you can reset a lot of all these inputs that can, can go to our subcortical circuits, uh, but also to our sensory cortices, representation cortices. This uh, green uh, box in the middle is important uh, because uh, representation here doesn't mean just uh, visual representation, but also how we perceive the reality. So we can uh, change the way, changing the input, uh, the way we construct our reality. And so it's good to take a different point of view on something about us. I'm not so worthless, I'm not so helpless, I'm not something broken, uh, but I'm a person with changing and facing my problem. And also about the external perception. They are not so menacing, they are not so bad. It is just something happening in the wild. Going back for a while to our um, disgust area, that is a point very, very relevant. It is about uh, microbiota or microbiome. You can find different definition with the slightly different uh, focus, but the concept is the same, is the population of good or bad uh, germs uh, in our body and specifically in gut. We have uh, almost two kilograms uh, of uh, microbes in the gut uh, that can change drastically how we do everything. So you can see here in, in the upper side uh, of the slide, uh, they can influence, the microbiota can go to the brain and influence the social in interaction, the stress responses, depression, cognition, anxiety, memory. Why? Because uh, it's working on, uh, we have to use a modern term uh, uh, about us, uh, it, it's, uh, mm, quite like we have outsourced the, produce, the production of some neurotransmitter. A lot of neurotransmitters are produced in the gut, but this microbioma. In fact, there are studies, uh, luckily just on animal models, or a post-mortem if something went wrong during a surgical operation. If you create a germ-free man or animal, he will immediately die in a few hours or minutes. We rely on our ability to do a lot of things. It's a sort of a joint venture we have with our microbes. The problem is the, the, part, uh, the bottom part of the image that stress can alter the microbiota. The, a wrong diet, uh, too much rich in carbohydrates, uh, alter these. The lack of probiotics or prebiotics uh, can change it, but of course, uh, if it is good, it can change in a good way. Pregnancy naturally changes the microbiota, and uh, antibiotics uh, are hugely devastating our microbiota. Let's consider that an average uh, anti antibiotics for five, seven days will destroy a huge part of your microbiota. And if you do nothing, it will take uh, almost two years to repopulate it. So you have two years to, do, uh, to, to go back to your initial condition aging, type of birth, lifestyle, genetics. So there is a lot of uh, uh, mechanisms. As you see in this part, there are a lot of connections. So different neurotransmitters, uh, 
immune cells, the vagus, the vagus nerve, spinal nerves. So it is very important. There are a lot of researches. If you change uh, drastically the microbiota, they will change back to our case, our uh, way to react to something that is disgusting or not. Why? Because the microbiota told, tells the brain, I'm able or I'm not able to digest this. And even if uh, the problem is not what you eat, like the girl uh, with the, the school, uh, if there is this message constantly, this message from the gut, I'm not able to um, accept something new, I'm not able to process a lot of things, uh, the message to the brain is quite generalized. So the brain is sending a wide message, okay, everything new, everything is too much uh, uh, away from uh, what you like, what you, you feel is uh, good for you, reject it. And when, when you reject something, literally, you reject it. I don't know uh, if in English uh, is the same or in your native English, your native language is the same, but we say vomitare and uh, rigettare, that is vomiting and rejecting, that are synonyms. So it's clearly you, have, you are refusing something and that the most powerful act is to evocate also the throwing up reflex. Okay, I've... A few times I, I'd like to say so much things, uh, but I have to move to other area. Uh, just a quick last uh, word uh, on mm, microbiota and food and disgust. Uh, a huge problem today is uh, glutamate. Glutamate is naturally um, an, excess an accessory um, molecules in our brain, we produce glutamate. But as you know, glutamate is a, a flavor and answer. All the processes, the food has a lot of it. So if, you are, if we are stressed, we produce a lot of glutamate. If we eat a lot of processed food, we intake a lot of um, glutamate, and it is too much. And consider that too much of glutamate or better. The, the problem is not the glutamate itself, is that it hyperstimulates our receptors and it changes everything. Pain, physical pain, once again, microbiota, the brain, the, the blood-brain barrier. So we have to take a, a huge care of reducing our intake of uh, external glutamate, and of course, introduce some uh, practice uh, to reduce uh, our brain production of glutamate. And this let's uh, us to the hyperactivation, hyper arousal uh, area, where <clears throat> the here in a in a nutshell. Uh, this is uh, the way I like to represent uh, our adaptation response. Uh, this schema is the result uh, of many different uh, neuroscience-based uh, way to consider what happens, what really happens in our brain from the moment we detect something, everything. There is a nose on my, there is a, a flea on my nose and I, I want to scratch it, but also I detect the problem. Oh, oh, oh my God, I have to uh, do a presentation to the conference tomorrow and the slides are not, uh, are not uh, ready. So we detect a problem, a real, mental, internal, external. We have a part of our brain that quickly labels it. This is unconscious. Labeling is the a neuroscientific way to say unconscious attribution, evaluation that is middle unconscious and conscious, and it is uh, fulfilled by a lot of different, different mechanisms. We have the problem setting. Here, the cognition uh, start to work uh, properly. Modulation, we do something to face the problem. And here, there is our crucial point, termination. 
every adaptation problem process has to terminate. We have to relax. Then we have to regenerate, learn something, do better prediction. So the next time we detect something, we have learned to manage it and we can manage it better. In our brain, to give you just a, a quick view, it's a matter of different uh, uh, networks. I like the way to use the cats uh, to represent them. These, these, uh, uh, these brain areas do something like that you can see. A default mode network uh, is about uh, go back to termination stay in that way, you are relaxed, it's something you train doing meditation, but not only. Uh, I love meditation, but uh, it's not something I like to do often, but this same default network, uh, if I, I am good at, uh, so if I am good at uh, uh, playing the guitar or uh, playing the piano, I play for fun, I'm in default mode network. Of course, if I am a young student uh, learning, uh, and so it's quite um, an effort and it could be frustrating, I'm using these other two. So it's not relaxing. But it's just to say that uh, um, taking a nap, uh, reading a good book, uh, uh, listening and watching to the ocean, it's all activating this. That is a different way to say, okay, you have solved the problem. You have not solved the problem. You have sometimes to go to termination and regeneration. In this way, you can lower down all your hyperactivation, upper hyperarousal, and feel more comfortable. And keep everything in balance. Your all your responses are in balance. In this area that is well known, I just want to add one less known uh, concept that is in partly in this area, partly about, once again, sensorial perception. We have in our brain the so-called uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus. It is directly related to our eyes. It perceives the natural uh, light, uh, sunlight and uh, regulate uh, all our internal clocks. Internal clocks, uh, you see peripheral clocks, uh, central clock. So the central clock uh, is in the brain. Uh. Central clock uh, is uh, everything uh, have waves uh, in our day. So, you know, cortisol rise and ups, melatonin rise and ups. So if you are dysregulated and you find this uh, in uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, chronic disorders, hyper excited person in any way you have to put down put them down in a, to a physiological way of being so it's very important to give more natural light and less <coughs> fake lights so all the lights from the devices are enriched in blue lights and is clearly not good. In fact, blue lights uh, is hyper exciting our brain. And uh, is uh, another way to say that uh, it is, uh, I watch my display, I change this, uh, the reaction in the subplasmatic nuclear, and then also in the pineal gland. And I don't uh, produce the uh, right amount of melatonin, so I can't sleep. So it's important to relax, uh, to take a, a nap, to do uh, psychotherapy about uh, all these problems. But it's also very useful to work uh, on the somatic uh, triggers. And so to use the <coughs> all that um, amazing function called the night shift, night mode, you have uh, on your uh, digital devices. This problem is so well known and so bad that uh, the, the reason you have the night mode and night shift that turn to orange your screen uh, is because 
it is forced by law. There was a medical review taken to this kind of um, enhancement in our screens. So it's not something fancy. It is something very important to us. So it is another way to work on, on this area. Okay. Going back to the vestibular system about so physical and mental health. There is, a, a, it's important to see that all of we have said, so vision, ER, but also muscle, muscles, joint, tendons, uh, the foot, uh, what we perceive under our uh, feet, uh, it's important, uh, goes through the neural systems and uh, we can reactivate good postures and anticipatory postural adjustments. This could seem something about uh, uh, your physician that could help with your bad postures, but it's also about uh, emotion and self-confidence. Why? Because uh, in uh, our uh, adaptation networks, uh, also this one, uh, salience network, uh, here you have uh, in the middle, uh, you have the insula. The insula is uh, an uh, integrative hub uh, where all the sensorial information go and are used to say, okay, you, are, you have all the resources to face uh, a problem, a threat, uh, or not, you haven't. And consider, that uh, we usually work on the resources, uh, but we work on the mental resources, on the emotional resources. But there are a lot of amazing studies that if you chemically with a uh, uh, um, sedative, if you inhibit uh, the physical responses, so if you can't uh, move your legs uh, or your shoulders, the big muscles, uh, all the emotional responses uh, are bad and the salience network can't work fine. And of course, uh, the reversal um, demonstration is that if you give more power to the big muscles, uh, so legs, uh, the, the back, uh, the shoulders, uh, the self-confidence uh, rise. It is both uh, chemical, you release dopamine, but it's also this system that is working all the time because you have gained a new level of physical confidence. So something I can suggest to you, of course, we don't have the time to go into all the details. I use a lot of this called resource balance techniques. So we take typical practical uh, activity is, that are done in rehabilitation. So you use a <clears throat> balance board like that. But at the beginning, we train just the ability to keep a little of balance. When you gain the balance, you introduce the emotional reprocessing. So technique that, that probably you already use or some variant of that, let's Think about uh, very common, very well known, our uh, uh, cognitive uh, reframing or uh, uh, judging, uh, evaluating all my resources, not only the physical, but when the physicals are activated. Uh, on this, uh, with the Association for Integrative Sciences, we have done a lot of researches. You have immediate enhances. We, we, do, um, we do this kind of trainings uh, while wearing the um, EEG, so we can look at brain waves. Uh, so we, if we do the procedures with or without uh, the physical activation, the brain waves are totally different and the results uh, are more effective if we introduce that. If this is too complex or too, too much, uh, uh, distance from your uh, usually uh, way to work uh, with patients, uh, you can do just a little at the beginning, maybe just to make them stand up and sit down two or three times before touching something important, uh, 
or asking them uh, when they are telling something emotionally engaging to give uh, a physical uh, um, representation of their <clears throat> of their activation <clears throat> another way okay i have just six minutes so i will jump to the temporal mandibular joints I'm talking about this. You probably will know these muscles. Close your mouth and see also these. Clench your teeth and expanding these muscles. Think about that. A lot of headaches are in this area. When we feel stressed, we use uh, to massage this area because uh, it, mm, it keeps a lot of tension, of physical and emotional tension. And it's uh, related. These small, small muscles, uh, it's the key of everything, but we don't have to work. We can work on this, but it's very painful. So we have to have uh, proper training. If not, uh, it's more the uh, pain uh, that than uh, the uh, good results. But these muscles are huge. Uh, are very strong you can massage here probably if you are more than 18 years old if you massage here you feel a, you feel a good quantity of pain and this is the temporal mandibular joints isolated but of course when you include the masseteers so we have also all these other muscles and going back to the neck, there are a lot. Uh, today, if you want to delve deep in these areas, we don't talk anymore about muscles, single muscles, uh, but we talk about muscular chains. And so we have all the muscles, and we have a lot of muscles, too many. We have dozens of muscles on muscles just here. 125 just to move the face and the right from here in the neck uh, dozens so <clears throat> what can you do practically what i have done with this girl uh, to inhibit uh, this reflex uh, relax uh, her uh, because uh, she had also a little mm, she uh, she reported that there was no problem in fact that she was a, a great student but uh, but uh, she was very competitive. She was. Uh, she wanted to be the, <clears throat> the best, and the competition, hunger, conflict uh, <clears throat> from the adaptation and the psychosomatic uh, responses are all uh, a big area activating this. So, uh, when I say aggressiveness, uh, it's you think about O.J. Simpson, something very aggressive, but maybe also conflict. I want to be better and win. Negotiator, they can be very fair and polite, but they are very aggressive. And this area, all these uh, are very active. So what you can try is to release all, all these uh, with a technique uh, I call uh, psychosomatic stretching. With some bibliography, I can send you uh, links uh, to free articles and videos where I explain uh, some of that. Uh, so <clears throat> to work on the temporal mandibular joints and the neck, uh, the first way is to massage down these. Uh, we don't have the time to do it together, I'm sorry. But you can't do only this. You have to work also on these muscles and on these muscles. <clears throat> if you work on all of them, you release the so-called second diaphragm. Inside here, all the soft tissues are called second diaphragm because they are related to the first diaphragm, the one we use to breathe. So it is important because uh, it's very well known uh, that uh, breathing techniques are powerful. You will see that doing both, uh, relaxing this one, diaphragm and these muscles, 
relaxing this one it's a very powerful way and synergic way to gain an optimal result and to release tension <laughs> also in this uh, kind of exercise uh, as in the resource balance uh, you can uh, initially work on the physical relaxation and the physical mastery but then you can introduce visualization um, emotional work for example at the beginning you relax here then you can ask uh, your clients patients to think about what this kind of pain what reminds you Maybe someone think, thinks about uh, a competition, someone else about uh, uh, my father blaming me. It's very interesting because it gives you a lot of, uh, um, a lot of interesting intuition that maybe just asking in a cognitive way, you will not reach or it will take a lot of time to, to reach. And you can process while releasing tension. And so the emotional uh, results uh, are very uh, powerful and strong. I, I would like to talk a lot, but uh, I like also to respect uh, the time I was given. So I can stop here. So if you have questions or uh, there is something else, uh, well, if not, uh, I am free. I'm happy to stop here. Okay, thank you so much. Very interesting. Yes, as usual. Very practical, very interesting. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. We, we wanted to take uh, questions, but since we don't have uh, more time, uh, so hopefully next time, or if you want, uh, we can provide uh, our participants with, with your email address if they want something to know more. Okay. Okay, yes, of course, I will be pleased to share my email. My, as uh, you have seen, uh, uh, it's uh, actually current my old website, uh, coming soon a new one, but uh, they will be... Uh, okay linked Perfect. for a long time so no matter they can reach me in, in, in some way yes and i will send you if yeah. you like some more yes. uh, links yes. articles uh, to yes. mr that. fabio mr fabio let me ask one question uh, yes. as the audience asked you do you provide training for this modality, modality? yes of course uh, i have right now uh an annual subscription, very cheap. Of course, it depends from the point of view, but it's not a huge yeah, amount. It's in Lebanon, it's in Lebanon, more interesting, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm going to do in the next month also a master program, but I think it's good to start uh, with the, this code, uh, the hub of the integrative science. There are a lot of pre-recorded uh, materials. So you can join that, uh, and uh, if you like, when uh, there will be, you could uh, evaluate it to join also the, the master. There is also my book, The Switch, about some of these uh, processes. So I will be uh, happy to, to see you in, uh, uh, in this next. Uh, perfect, thank you so perfect. much. We'll provide uh, the participants with every details, and thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was thank a real you. good pleasure. For the uh, next time. Thank you so much. Have, have fun and take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.